Barakatay Yahuwah, Barakatay Yahuwah Shai, Kol Halam Yom La Yahuwah, Baha Sham, Yahuwah Shai, Baracha HaKodash, which means all praises to Yahuwah is the name of the Heavenly Father, Baha Sham means in the name, Yahuwah Shai is the name of His only begotten Son, who the world is only called Jesus Christ, Baracha HaKodash means in the Holy Spirit, Spirit of Truth, only way we can worship the Father and the Son, Dabba'anas to the Apostles and Elders of Great Millstone, Peace, Blessings, and Salutations to all you brothers preaching the Gospel and Truth and in sincerity, all is in charity. It's the Brother Mathathia from the Great Millstone Camp, the Branch on Des Moines. And you can see the video on your screen. This is the Possible Boss channel. And uh, he did a lesson entitled Passion. And um, it's very spiritual, man, and heavy in the spirit. You know, because, um, you know, the brothers that, you know, know follow this channel, uh, you know, we do Spirit Like the Wind every Sunday. And um, yesterday, this past Sunday, we didn't do one, you know. But we did gather together, and the lesson that was done <laughs> was for us, and and that was recorded in the heavens, because what we talked about and and what the spirit was on us to say, it needed to be said, and right after you know, uh, um, you know, the spirit you know left from um, pretty much left from us, and we started to cool down uh, in the spirit, and uh, brothers started to let their hair down. You know, some brothers left, went home. You know, get ready for uh, work the next day. And then, um, Lord behold, boom, this notification pops up and, uh, <laughs> and Apostle Gabar is going in about passion, man. And it's the same thing that the Holy Spirit was uh, uh, speaking through us, you know, last night, which is, you know, why we didn't do the Spirit Like the Wind lesson, because that lesson was, was for us uh, uh, ourselves, you know. But without further ado, I, uh, I want to respond to this lesson, Lord, as well. I hope it's edifying. And um, I really just want to go into <clears throat> examples of our forefathers and the, <clears throat> and the passion that they showed. Now, first off, let, let's get this word passion. Now, the word passion, circa 1200, the sufferings of Hamashiach on the cross, the death of Hamashiach from old French passion, uh, Yahweh Shah's passion, physical suffering. From late Latin, passionum, suffering, enduring. So the word passion literally means to suffer, man. So if someone says they have a passion for something, meaning they're willing to deal with whatever afflictions and hardships comes with uh, 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 the passion that they have. You have a guy to have passion for, uh, for basketball, right? That meaning he loves to uh, loves basketball so much that he'll suffer anything in order for him to partake in it. You see, whether it be football or whatever it may be. See, our passion has to be towards this truth. Meaning what we have to uh, whatever we go through, man, is worth it for the uh, 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 will of Yahweh Basham Yahweh to be done, man. Right. Like it is. Let's let, let's grab this. This is the book of Proverbs. Not Proverbs. I don't know why I said that. This is the book of Romans, chapter 15 and 4. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And it's heavy within itself because this word patience, when you, matter of fact, let's just get it. When we go into the word patience, quality of being willing to bear adversities, calm endurance of misfortune, sufferings. <laughs> you see, so passion and patience is synonymous with each other, man. So going back to the scripture, for whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. And let's get that word patience in the Greek. It's a hoopome. Hoop on oname, steadfast uh, constancy, endurance. In the New Testament, the characteristic of a man who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his loyalty to faith and piety by even the greatest trials and sufferings. Ooh, that's a heavy definition right there, man. Continuance, patience, waiting, man. You see? So we can read these scriptures and understand what we have to go through. And understand that we have to have passion or patience within this walk of ours, man. Right? Because as Paul wrote and said, what? It 
This is the book of uh, First Thessalonians. I was going to say Philippians. This is the book of uh, First Thessalonians 3. I start at 1. It says, Wherefore, when we could no longer forbear, we thought it good to be left at Athens alone and sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of the Heavenly Father and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Yahweh to establish you, to strengthen you, and to comfort you concerning your faith. You see? To build brothers up, to comfort brothers. It's the purpose of these lessons. Strengthening the, uh, the feeble hands and the knees that, or the feeble knees and the hands that hang low, roughly paraphrasing, right? Verse three, that no man should be moved by these afflictions for yourselves know that we are appointed thereunto. For verily when we were with you, we told you before that we should suffer tribulation even as it came to pass and ye know. So as it is written in the book of Acts, I believe it's the 14th chapter. Let's get that. It's the book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22. It says confirming. That word confirming means to strengthen, to establish. You see, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of the heavenly father, man. You see. And the passion that we have in, in, in flames or, or, or it increases the zeal and the purpose that we have within this ministry, man. We're supposed to be um, motivated through the sufferings. We're supposed to be motivated through the things that we're suffering, man. The apostles uh, rejoiced that they were counted worthy to suffer for the name of Yahweh Shai. And it's the same thing as us, man. Regardless of what we're going through in our personal lives and in and, and whatever tribulations or situations we find ourselves in, we should be thankful. We should be thankful and appreciative of this opportunity that the Lord has given us, man. You see, we don't want to be this cat, right? Let's grab this scripture. We don't want to be this guy. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 6. And, um... Verse 20, it says, she is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her, right? Because he don't understand that we have to go through these trials and tribulations. He don't understand that this is the perfecting process. You see, and that's why it's important. Like it says, Romans 15 and 4, these things are written for our learning. It's important to know these things, man. You see? It says she is very unpleasant to the unlearned. He that is without understanding will not remain with her. She will lie upon him as a mighty stone of trial and he will cast it from her or it be long. So you got guys to look at this as a burden, man. I, I got to do this. Uh, I got to do that. They're not willing to suffer for the Lord's namesake, but yet you're still suffering for something. See, everybody on this planet is suffering for something, man. Right? You got guys that patiently or or, 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 or or their passion is toward their woman. They have patience with their woman, meaning they're suffering things just for their woman's sake or for their children or for their parents or for their job or just to continue in wickedness itself, man. You're going to suffer something, right? Why not for righteousness sake? Here it is. We have that opportunity to do so. See, reading down. It says, verse 22, for wisdom is according to her name and she is not manifest unto many. So here it is. This, the word manifest goes into made clear. So here it is. This 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 word or, or, or this road. Right. Has been made clear unto us. So we fully understand. Right. What we have to go through in order to achieve the goal at the end. And this is what our forefathers understood. They understood it perfectly. Matter of fact, let's go to an example of one of our forefathers. Now, this is the book of uh, Hebrews, chapter 11, right? And this is the faith chapter, man. This is Hebrews 11 and 24. It says, by faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction Right. Let's get the word suffer. It's the. Uh, 
It's a uh, compound word, right? With to treat ill, oppress, or plague, right? So it says to treat ill with another, to be ill treated in company with, share persecutions, or come into a fellowship of ills. Who to maltreat in company with, that is endure persecution together, man. Right? As it is written. What's the precept here? Yeah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Yeah, I, I'm read it. Uh, Psalms 84 and 10. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. I had rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my power than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Right? And to be in and, 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 and to be within the courts of the Lord, we gotta be purified. So we gotta go through that fire. We gotta go through those trials and tribulations because we have to be tried. In the book of Sirach, that sixth chapter that I was reading, if we just started up, it says that we have to prove a friend first. So this is the proven process of each and every last one of us, man. To show forth our passion, <laughs> you see? But it says to uh, uh, to uh, have a fellowship of one's sufferings, right? It says, um, how is it, how is it, uh... How's it worded? Because the scripture says we have uh, entered into Yahushua's crucifixion, right? We're partaker of uh, uh, of his sufferings. <laughs> this is um, Second Corinthians one. And five. Matter of fact, let's start at one. Paul, an apostle of Yahweh Hamashiach, by the will of the Most High, and Timothy, Timotheus, right, our brother, unto the church of the Heavenly Father, which is at Corinth, with all the saints which are in all Achaia. Grace be to you in peace from the Most High, our Father, and from the Lord Yahweh Hamashiach. Blessed be the power, even the Father of our Lord Yahweh the Father of mercies, and the power of all comfort. Who comforted us in all our tribulation. How are we comforted? Through these scriptures, man. Romans 15 and 4. <laughs> you see? This is the comforter. So when we're catching hell in our everyday life, we can go into the scriptures and relax. See, guys, look at going into the scriptures as a burden. It's a trial. No. This is our this is our relax. This is our safe haven. Yahweh Shah said, uh, uh, take the yoke. Uh, 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 take my yoke upon thee because it is easy and it is light roughly paraphrasing man those that are troubled rest with us you see this is the rest wherein we call the weary to rest man see out in the world we're plagued <laughs> you know out in the world we're, we're burdened but, but doing the will of the Lord, man, doing these lessons, hitting the highways and hedges, reading, studying, watching the videos, man, that's the relief. That's the comfort. Which is why this has to be our passion, man. That means what? We're willing to suffer anything for what? For the will of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shai. Ain't no way in hell you you got guys out in the world that ain't ain't got no type of commitment toward this gospel, but yet they got more discipline and passion for the craft that they're in than us, man. As Paul said, they do it for a corruptible crown, but we for incorruptible. How much more? Verse four, who comforted us in all our tribulation that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble. By the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of the most high. <laughs> you see? So that what? These scriptures may comfort us and that we may teach and comfort others with the scriptures. With the Holy Spirit. The same spirit that's comforting us, man, is what's going to comfort the whole church. You see? Verse 5. For as the sufferings of Yahweh Shah abound in us, so our consolation. Meaning, what's that? says a uh, uh, consolation comfort solace that which affords comfort or refreshment you see our exhortation 
admonish, admonition, encouragement, our entreaty, our instructive, a minatory, conciliatory, powerful, <laughs> oratory discourse. <laughs> Man, you know, it says, so our consolation also aboundeth by Yahweh Shai. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as ye are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye be also of the consolation, man. Whew. Come on, man. So we're being partakers. in. Let's get a scripture just to prove that, right? What is Paul saying right here? The same thing he told the church in Rome. This is Romans 8 and 17. It says, and if children, then heirs, heirs of the Most High and joint heirs with Yahweh Shai, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together, partakers of the reward. For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us, man. You see? Now, if this don't comfort your spirit, I don't know. Ain't, ain't nothing will. <laughs> you know? Nothing will, man. How did, how, uh, man, how, how did uh, 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 King David word it? This is my comfort in my affliction. Yep. Psalms 119 and 50. This is my comfort in my affliction for thy word hath quickened me, man. Whew. Whew. First Thessalonians 3 and 7. Therefore, brethren, we are comforted over you in all our affliction and distress by your faith. So whatever we suffer, and whatever we're going through, man, AA is, is, is worth it. I endure all things for the elect's sake that they may obtain the salvation, which is in our Lord. Yahweh shy, man. As Paul said, those things that, that I went through, that I suffered, it fell out to the furtherance of the gospel, man. So that as many brothers that hear about my bonds and my trials and tribulations or what I went through, now there are more bold to walk in the spirit of the Lord. Now they're more bold and strengthened in the spirit to continue in the walk because they see how the Lord strengthened me and got me through it. So they believe that the Lord can strengthen them and get them through it too, man. Passion. You see? Now, what was that? Partakers of suffering. What is that? The Peter? This is 1 Peter 4 and 12. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you as though some strange thing happened unto you. But rejoice in as much as ye all partakers of Yahweh Shai's sufferings. We're partakers of Yahweh Shai's passion. That when his glory shall be revealed, ye may be glad also with exceeding joy. If ye be reproached for the name of Yahweh Shai, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of the heavenly father resteth upon you on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified man man let's go back to the hebrews hebrews um 11 and 24 again it says by faith moses when he was come to years refused to be called the son of pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of the most high then to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, only for a moment, man. You got guys that want to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a moment instead of suffering for a moment in order to enjoy righteousness forever. You understand that, man? Come on now. Verse 26, esteeming, right? The reproach of Yahweh Shah. What's the word reproach? Such as Yahweh Shah suffered for the cause of the Most High. You see? Esteeming the reproach of Yahweh Shah greater riches than the treasures in Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward, man. The reward that, that's, that's going to be given unto blameless souls, man. See, in Wisdom of Solomon in the second chapter, right? Those ones with that yellow spirit. Those ones that was doing as thou wilt. Kings, matter of fact, let's get that. <laughs> Romans 
right? At the end, they didn't consider a reward for blameless souls, man. It's verse 21. It says, such things they did imagine and were deceived. So when we start at the top, it says, for this is the ungodly's reasoning and their reasoning was not right. You see? So to go down, it says, such things they did imagine and were deceived. For their own wickedness hath blinded them. As for the mysteries of the Most High, they knew them not. Neither hoped they for the wages of righteousness, nor discerned a reward for blameless souls, man. You see, that's what we're looking forward to, man. That reward for, for, for a blameless soul. Hoped for the, hoping for the, rage, the wages of righteousness, man. Right? Let's go back. Verse 26 again, esteeming the reproach of Yahweh Shah greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had respect unto the unto the reward. Let's get that word respect. It's a compound word. It says to turn the eyes away from other things and fix them on some one thing. Woo! Hey, Matthew, the sixth chapter, right? Having our eyes single to look attentively, to look with steadfast mental gaze, man. Woo! Come on now. Come on now. Meaning keeping our eyes single, our mind focused on the mission. True passion, man. True passion. So that's it. That's all, man. I don't want to make this all long and drawn out. The water of Yahweh Basham Yahweh Shah for giving me the spirit to do this lesson. I'm going to give all praises and glory to Yahweh Bahasham Yahweh Shah Bahasha Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders of great millstone and peace, blessings, and salutations to all you brothers preaching the gospel of truth and sincerity, always in charity, who's rightly dividing the word of truth directly and correctly. Peace, blessings, and salutations to you brothers, you few sisters that may, may watch as well. And um, matter of fact, I'm going to end it on this last scripture. It just popped in my mind. This Acts 1 and 1. It says the former treatise, I have made O Theophilus. And Theophilus means a friend of, uh, uh, of the Heavenly Father, a friend of God. Theo is God. Uh, uh, Philo is a lover or friend. So a lover of God, man. So these letters were written to the friend or the lovers of the Most High. And when you read Wisdom of Solomon, it says that the Most High loveth none but him that dwelleth with wisdom, because she maketh them friends and prophets, man. So this word is only to those that understand it, man. But it says, the former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Yahweh Shah began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up after that he, through the Holy Spirit, had given commandment unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion, you see, after his sufferings, after his experience, like it says down here, right, by many infallible proofs. Being seen, of, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of the heavenly father, man. So we, in in 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, right? It speaks about, it speaks about uh, having the mind of Yahweh Shah, where our Lord's mindset was set on the will of the heavenly father. His passion was toward Yahweh. So our passion has to be, uh, uh, um, and likewise, the same thing. 1 Corinthians 2 verse 16 for who have known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of yahweh shai man so lord will hope that was edifying shalom